Hey guys, in this lesson we're going to continue on from our previous lesson on AP redundancy. Previously we learned that we can prime APs to join another controller in the event of controller failure. In this lesson we'll be looking at what happens when an AP's primary controller comes back online once it's failed to a secondary controller. If you'd like to read along with the lesson you can find the link to our website in the description below. So as we know, we can prime APs with a primary, secondary and tertiary controller. In our example, we've got two controllers, WLC01 and WLC02. WLC01 is the primary controller for our APs and WLC02 is the secondary. By default, if our primary controller is online and active, our APs configured to use it will join it. As such, all of our APs are currently associated to WLC01. Let's imagine WLC01 has now failed, and our APs have now associated to WLC02. Everything is working as required. What happens when WLC comes back online? Let's have a look. WLC01 is now back online, but if we look, our APs are still associated to WLC02. Why is this? By default, APs that have failed to a secondary or tertiary controller will stay associated to the controller they've failed over to. Maybe this isn't how we want it to work. Maybe you want our APs to fail back to our primary controller if they come back online. Thankfully, Cisco wireless controllers have the option to enable automatic fallback to our primary controller. This is known as AP fallback. With AP fallback enabled on our controller, APs will automatically rejoin its primary controller once it's back online and active. So now we've got an understanding of AP fallback and what it aims to achieve, let's look at how we can configure it on our wireless controllers. We'll start by logging into our wireless controller and selecting controller at the top. From here we'll select general. Under the configuration options here, you'll notice a configuration option for AP fallback. Currently this is disabled by default. All we need to do is enable this and apply the configuration. It's worth noting that this will need enabling on all wireless controllers within the environment. And there we have it, that's an overview of how we can allow APs to fall back to their primary controller after failing over to a redundant controller. If you've liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, you can also follow along with this lesson over on our website, link in the description below.